hi to the camera. Say I'm back. I'm back. I'm gone. Hey guys, it's Maggie and today it is the fourth day of December, so I finally feel like it's acceptable to wear my ugly Christmas sweater, which I wore in a Christmas video last year, and I'm probably going to be wearing this in a lot of videos because I really like it. It's very comfortable and my house is cool. Today I am doing the coffee book tag. I did this tag like two years ago, but I deleted that video because I barely read anything back then, and my reading has gotten so much like more diverse in that time, so I really want to redo it, and I don't remember who did this tag, so I'm just going to find that, leave it in the description, you guys know how this works, so we're just going to get started. So the first type of coffee is black coffee, which is when you name a book or series that is tough to get into but has really hardcore fan. So for this one, I picked Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Mass. This book took me so long to get into. It was actually Crown of Midnight that took me forever to get through. It took me like a literally probably six months to read it. I don't know why, maybe it was partly because of school, but I just couldn't get myself to read it. And the fans are so dedicated to this book, which is amazing, and I love seeing that. But it just took me a while to get into, but once you're in, it's very, it's impossible to get out. Next, I have Peppermint Mocha, which is where you name a book that gets really popular around this time of year. And for that, I have Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. I think I did this in my last coffee book tag like two years ago. I really, really love reading Sorcerer's Stone around the holidays and just watching the Harry Potter movies around the holidays. It's so nice and warm, and mainly I'm talking about the earlier ones, like Five and Up, although Six is the exception, because Six is the romantic comedy and it's like one of my favorites. Next is Hot Chocolate, which is what is your favorite children's book? And for this one, I have The Little House series by Laura Ingalls Wilder. This is my original edition of like the first three books when I was very, very little. I was seven, I think this book and it's so old. Writing's huge. I read this with my mom all the time. I loved it. I loved the show and I even wrote my name in pencil on the side in second grade as well. So I really really loved it, this whole series and we read it in school in like fourth grade or something like that. But it was really fun to read growing up. The next one I have is Double Shot of Expresso. Name a book that kept you on the edge of your seat from start to finish. I have The Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon. I could not put this book down. It was insane. Such a wild ride. It's amazing. It's wonderful. Everyone should read it. This book is beautiful. I loved it. And you can read it in one sitting. Next is Starbucks. And you name a book you see everywhere. And I still see The Fault in Our Stars by John Green everywhere, which is fine with me because it was my favorite contemporary book until I read Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. But it's in my top three for contemporaries. And I love this book and the movie so much and it's still everywhere and I think that's really cool although a lot of people thought it was over like rated and everything I don't think it is I think it's wonderful next is the hipster coffee shop where you give an indie book or an indie author a shout out and I am giving a shout out to yours truly by Annabelle Pitcher I think I've talked about this book before about a girl who writes letters to a guy on death, death row and she tells him her deepest darkest secret it's really cool and I really like this book and I read it in one sitting as well Next is Oops, I Accidentally Got Decaf, where you basically list a book that you thought you would get more from, and for this I have Glass Sword by Victoria Aveyard. I did really enjoy this book. I love the Red Queen series, but Red Queen was so, like, insane with the action, like it was just going, going, going. But Glass Sword just felt kind of there. Like, it, it felt more like a filler book to me. And I don't know, I really enjoyed it, but nothing really happened that stands out to me that I remember. So I guess I expected more from it just because Red Queen was way more hyped in, in terms of action. Last is The Perfect Blend, which is a book or series that was bitter or sweet but ultimately satisfying at the end. And I have Crooked, King Crooked Kingdom. I say Crooked Kingdom, but everyone says Crooked Kingdom. So I don't know what it is. But Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo, the ending slash sequel to the Six of Crows duology. I loved this book. It ripped my heart out, and if you read the book, you know what I'm talking about. It ripped me to shreds, but it was ultimately so satisfying at the end, and it ended pretty much the exact way I wanted it to, with the exception of what happened. So, thanks so much for watching, guys. I will leave a link to the original tag down in the description below, and be sure to subscribe so you can see when I upload. I usually upload every Wednesday, and I'm trying to upload on Sundays as well. So, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!